Welcome back. In this video, I'll teach you everything that you need to know about the gypsum toxicity and how it affects the ECG. This is a very important topic and you will see it mentioned everywhere. To start, we have to know exactly what is the mechanism of action of digoxin. And this is again a very important part, especially for exams. Digoxin works by increasing the contractility of the heart. This is called an inotropic effect. Ultimately, digoxin increases intracellular calcium. And more calcium means more contraction. But it does this indirectly. It blocks the sodium-potassium ATPase in the heart. This ATPase normally would exchange potassium with sodium. So it would kick sodium out of the cell and brings potassium in. But if you block this exchanger, potassium will stay outside and sodium will stay inside. So sodium will accumulate inside and the cell will have too much sodium inside. And the increased potassium outside can cause hyperkalemia in certain patients. So now we have too much sodium inside the cell. Coincidentally, we have another exchanger at the other part of the cell. This exchanger in a normal patient would exchange sodium with calcium. Because the sodium-potassium ATPase will exchange sodium with potassium, the sodium inside the cell will be depleted. And so the other exchanger replenishes this depleted sodium with the calcium-sodium exchanger. But if we already have too much sodium inside, this exchanger does not work and calcium will remain inside. And that's simply how digoxin works. But it also has some other effects on the vagal tone, as it increases the parasympathetic tone, and this reduces the AV node conduction. This results in decrease of heart rate. In the ECG, digoxin toxicity manifests in QT shortening. There will also be ST depression, T-wave changes, either peaking or inversion, and prolongation of the PR interval. Patients who are at risk of developing digoxin toxicity include those with thyroid problems, either hypo or hyperthyroidism, advanced age, myocardial infarction patients, patients with end-stage renal disease, hypercalcemia, achalosis, hypoxemia, or acidosis. One of the interesting and important changes these patients will complain of is change in the vision color, mainly the yellow-green light. This is very important and very characteristic. To treat these patients, we simply have to stop the digoxin first, and if the symptoms don't resolve, we can use the digoxin-specific antibodies. Our ECG course contains all the changes that can occur in an ECG and it helps you become an ECG expert so that you can recognize any ECG that you might come across. The course contains everything that might affect an ECG, all the symptoms, the causes, and of course the treatments. It also has plenty of quizzes to test your knowledge and make sure that you cement these informations and be able to answer any question about an ECG. You can access the course using the link in the description or in the pinned comment.